By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have something truly special for you. I am playing against a 666 card deck. It is built and piloted by Marco. He's called it Dante's Inferno. It's black and it's red now. I mean, you don't want to skip the deck tech section in this video. You want to see the deck picture. It is beautiful. The deck is just crazy. Um, and he's taking on, I guess, my kind of now boring looking deck. It's Elemental's Vault. Very cool deck, but not 100, 666 cards. It is blue and red and full of elementals. Now, before I start with the deck tech section, I would first like to point out that you can also choose to skip the deck tech section, go straight to the games, check out the deck techs later. The easiest way to do this is, as always, by checking out the links in the description below. There you will find several timestamps, right? And when you click on the timestamp MTG Games, it'll take you straight to the match. In that same description below, you will also find more information about the rule set. In this particular video, we are playing according to the X points rules. So if you want to know more about that, check out the description below. And also in that same description, you will find a link to my Patreon page. And if you have a moment, please visit patreon.com slash Timmy Talks and consider becoming a patron of the show because the patrons are really what's keep keeping this channel afloat. So if you've got a moment, please visit patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Okay, now that you're fully informed, I'm going to start with the deck decks and oh boy, this is going to be interesting. Let's just start with Marco's deck and his 666 card deck photo. And here we see the deck photo of Marco. So this is Dante's Inferno, right? I mean, this is just crazy stuff. Now, maybe it's good to kind of give you a background story. So Dante was a poet. He made this poem, Inferno. Inferno is another word for hell. And then Botticelli made a painting about it called Dante's Inferno. I believe the painting at the moment, you can see it here right now, by the way, is hanging in Florence. I believe I actually saw it in Florence when I was visiting Florence a few years ago. It's it's a very impressive piece of art. And I just love the fact that Marco is taking that into magic with this deck photo. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, I'm not sure what I can say about the deck. It probably has all the red and black cards that Marco owns. Old school cards, that is. In here, there are also a lot of artifacts in here, I guess. It's built according to the X points rules. So you can only put 10 points of cards with points allocated to them in the 666 card uh, deck. So Marco told me that he did uh, build it according to those rules. So, I mean, that's an accomplishment by itself. Um, and he also has a special way of shuffling. So here's the deck, right? So I'm not gonna say anything else about it. Think about it. how do you think he's gonna shuffle this? And I will show you in um, later in this video when we start uh, looking at the match itself. So yeah, a beautiful deck. Thank you for bringing it to the channel, Marco. And if you don't win the flavor prize with this deck, I don't know. What will, to be honest. Anyway, this is Marco's deck. Now let's take a look at my list. And here we see my deck, Elemental's Vault. Now I wanted to do a few things with this deck. Now first of all, I just wanted to cast all the Elementals that were in Revised. Because originally this was a Revised only deck. But then I thought, I really need my City of Brasses to have a double blue or a double red. So I decided to make like a reprint deck. So now it's Revised, Chronicles and 4th Edition. And maybe you're wondering, there is one elemental really missing, and that is time elemental. So I've actually made a little change in the deck. I've took out the two energy fluxes and the unsummon, and I've put in uh, one time elemental, and also a Hercules recall and a shatter storm. So they're not on this deck photo, but I just wanted to let you know those are the changes that I've made. And also in the sideboard, I took out the energy flux and the two earth binds, and I put in three unsummons, I believe, in total. So those are, you know, small little tweaks that I've made uh, with the sideboard, or maybe I think I also added the control magic in the sideboard there somewhere. But anyway, they're just small technicalities. The idea of the deck remains the same. So my elementals are locked up in a vault, and if I find my uh, mana vaults, I can tap them and I can unleash the power of the elementals. That's kind of the story of the deck. and. The cool thing about this is that it's just it's just fun to cast these big elemental creatures. I just remember when I was a young Timmy, you know, when I bought my first, uh, you know, booster packs of Revised. These these elementals, you could get them, I wouldn't say easily, but they were around, you know. They were uncommon, of course, but they weren't played that often. And, you know, you could you could kind of collect them. So I managed to get some elementals quite early on in my in my magic career. 
And uh, I just, I've always enjoyed casting them. I love the, the simplicity of the design, right? You've got a 5-4 that is the water elemental, and then you've got the fire elemental. Those are both 5 fours for 5, just vanilla creatures. Then you've got the earth elemental, which I think is a little bit underestimated because it's a 4-5 for 5, and that 5 toughness, toughness makes it really difficult to deal with. And then you've got the air elemental, which is 5 mana for a 4-4 four, four flying. Again, a little bit underestimated in my opinion. I think now people are starting to see more of the value of the air elemental because you see it more now in the old school tournaments but you know back in the day people really preferred the the sangir vampire and the, and the sarah angel over the air elemental for obvious reasons but if you consider that this is a blue card i mean a 4-4 flying for five in blue that is really good you know that's good stats for that amount of, of uh, mana input uh, anyway the rest of the deck it's really kind of like the the strength of blue right you've got the counter spells you've got the control magics you've got the brain geyser for card draw then on the side of red you've got your direct damage in the form of uh, lightning bolts you've got one fireball one disintegrate one earthquake earthquake being quite good in this deck because of the elementals are usually pretty big so earthquake is ideal to get rid of a lot of smaller ground creatures um, then you've got um, a blood moon which can be a showstopper for those greedy uh, greedy multicolored decks that you see so often in old school and then of course a fork and a wheel of fortune and, and fork is just one of my favorite cards because it's just it, you can just play it as such a big surprise i love playing a fork when my opponent's guessing like an ancestral recall or you play a fork on their counter spell that's always a lot of fun to do or better on their mind twist that's when the fun really starts anyway uh this is my deck we've looked at the super cool deck of marco so that means we are ready let's start with the match game a number one here is about to start in here you actually see how marco shuffles so he's going to go with his fingers i say stop then he stops right and then he takes out those cards let's give it a moment okay there he goes so i've got to say stop and then he takes out those cards so that's the pile that he's playing with and he's going to shuffle that up and of course, it's already like randomized in there. I think he did distribute the lands. I think, I'm not sure. But anyway, this is how he does it. I just wanted to, wanted to show you this, that you have an understanding of how, how he manages to have such a big pile. I think it's a pretty smart, clever, like clever solution. Now he puts the deck there on the left side, and this is the pile that he's going to play with, which are about 60 cards, give or take. So he's going to shuffle that up. Anyway, this is, uh, yeah, this is just fun. I'm just really looking forward to play against it to see if it works. I mean, do I have a huge advantage with my 60 card constructed deck? You would think so, but we'll just have to wait and see. Game number one. Let's see who won the dice roll. Who can start? I guess it's me starting with an island, tapping ooh, into a soaring. That's a really good start. Ramping up, five cards in hand, passing the turn. Let's see what Marco can do with his uh, 666 card deck. He does have a turn one play. Ooh, Stone Throwing Devils. 1-1 one, one first striker from Arabian Nights. So some early pressure. I wonder what I'm going to do. Finding a mountain. Hmm, that's not ideal. I'd rather would have, I guess, a second blue with Counter Magic as a backup. Passing the turn. I mean, that is kind of the thing with my Elementals deck because all the Elementals have double blue or double red, mo except Time Elemental, I guess. You really need like two mana of the same color to get going. There is a Mountain, so a Mountain and Swamp here for Marco. Another play. He's on fire. Okay, there's a Will o the Wisp. And of course, he doesn't have any black mana now to regenerate it, so I could bolt it if I have a bolt in hand, of course. Yep, there's the bolt. So deciding to bolt the Wisp because, of course, it's a really good weapon against my big creatures. Such a good blocker. But so far, I have to say, Marco's deck, uh, it's looking pretty good. He had a one drop. He had a turn two play. Now I'm finding my second island. So I guess I found that from the top so I can have counter magic open. I was thinking about tapping. Ooh, look at this. I am going to do something. Tapping the Soul Ring, one red and Soul Ring. Oh, an Earthquake for two. That is very aggressive. So I really want to get rid of the, um, of the Stone Throwing Devils here. So maybe I'm a little bit worried that he could have a very aggressive deck. But then again, I mean, 666 cards. I think maybe this Earthquake is a little bit excessive. 
Or do I have a Wheel of Fortune in hand? That could be a reason to quickly play out my hand, I guess. Ooh, there's a Blight. So Blight is an enchant land. And whenever I tap the land, I'm going to lose it to the Blight. Not countering this. And it looks like he's uh, enchanted my mountain. Untapping now three cards in hand. So when I tap my mountain, it's destroyed. At least I can still take a red out of it one last time. Okay, here's a volcanic island. That's probably going to solve that issue. Tapping five. Are we going to see an elemental? Oh, we're going to see a disintegrate. Okay, so a disintegrate for four on Marco. Yeah, and right now, looking at me play, I'm pretty sure I've got a Wheel of Fortune in hand here. Because all I'm doing is really emptying my hand as quickly as I can. I'm not sure if that is the right call, though, because like Earthquake and Disintegrate, two cards that can be quite powerful as well. So I'm really thinking about casting that wheel and hoping to find a lot of elementals to overwhelm Marco, probably. And, ooh, there's another Stone Throwing Devils. Tapping two more. There's an Ao Pile, so the card from Fallen Empires, two mana to cast one. Tap and Sack, I believe. I believe it's one. And then you can deal two damage to any target. It's like a mini Lightning Bolt. There's another Volcanic. Tapping four. Okay. <laughs> Gonna control magic. The Stone Throwing Devils. And then I wonder, if it's a Wheel of Fortune, am I gonna play it out? I mean, if I am, I'm gonna give Marco a full turn, right? And I'm gonna destroy my own mountain. I am gonna play it out immediately. Oh, why not? I mean, it's always fun to cast a wheel. Ooh, Falling Star, Sengir Vampire, and an off control gone for Marco. Pretty good cards, but of course he is going to draw a fresh 7, and next turn he can uh, start. But also 7 new cards for me, but of course Marco having the slight advantage that he can start with 7 in hand, drawing into card number 8. So he's going to take on his turn, draw card number 8. And let's see what he's going to do. There's a desert. So that's going to work quite nicely against the Stone Throwing Devils. And he's really in the tank. He's got seven cards in hand still, of course. Only uh, played out a land. Tapping a black here, it seems. There's a black vice. Okay, that is actually not too bad with those seven in hand. So that means I'm probably going to take three damage. Next turn, going to drop to 14. Unless I have some kind of instance that I could play. Let's first see if Marco wants to do something else with his turn six in hand now, I believe. It's going to tap a red and a black. A howling mine. Okay. I like this. Howling Mind, Black Vice, that's very old school. Gonna untap, now I'm in my upkeep. So if I have an instant, I can stack it in a way that I first play the instant out of my hand before I take the damage from the vice. The question is, do I have an instant? Do I want to do that? I've got, of course, Hercules Recall in the deck. But if I play a Recall on Marco, it also means that I don't draw the extra card, and that's kind of a shame. So I guess I'm just taking the damage here. Gonna draw two for turn, so that means I've got nine in hand at the moment. So I mean, who knows, that vice could become really good. Okay, here's a mana vault. Are we finally gonna see an elemental? So seven in my hand still. I mean, that has to happen, right? My deck is packed with elementals, I'm playing Three water elementals, three fire elementals, or was it two water elementals? Four air elementals, three earth elementals, so just a lot, a time elemental. So I would be really surprised if I'm not casting an elemental. Playing a fire elemental here, there we go, five, four. Six cards in hand, passing the turn. But if Marco, of course, just has an answer to this, it's not too bad because, you know, I've got the Vice damage, maybe I've got the Manifold damage next turn as well, who knows. 
And then, of course, it's looking, uh, looking pretty good for Marco. So four cards or four lands for him, I should say. Not sure how many cards he's got in the hand. I guess five there with the dice there at the bottom. Or seven then after draw. Anyway, we'll just wait and see. Tapping four. What are we going to do for four? I mean, it's got to it's gotta be fun to play with Marco's deck as well. You know, every game is different because every game you take another piece of your deck. Oh, there's a Neveneral's Disc. That is pretty good, actually. If that disc can stick. My, my, my. And there, I guess I'm playing in the end step and Hercules Recall on Marco. Maybe then he's got a discard. Does he want to use the AO pile in response? Looks like he is going to. He's going to use it on the Stone Throwing Devils. I mean, this is pretty sweet. He's going to take the cards back. Again, I'm not quite sure how many cards he already had in hand. I guess we're going to see that now if he has to discard. He's going to discard a mountain. So yeah, I guess he had eight in hand now. So now he's got seven. Looks like I'm going to discard the mana vault and take a damage... Oh no, of course the vice is no longer there, so don't take a damage. I'm still on 14. I mean, if I have counter magic, that will be really ideal. Then I can counter away the, um, the disc if it comes back. Anyway, attacking for 5 first. So Marco's on 9, 7 in hand. I've got 4 cards in hand, by the way. So quite, uh, not low on cards, but lower on cards than Marco. Tapping 3. Oh, there's a Time Elemental. Yeah, that Time Elemental is going to be so good. If it can stick, it's going to be so good against the disc. This is a big problem for Marco. has to find like a Lightning Bolt or something. He has to take out that Time Elemental. Interestingly enough, uh, I didn't tap the Mana Vault for this because now I don't have Counter Magic open. Could have considered to tap the Mana Vault and an Island and just keep two blue open. Of course, then I would have taken a point of Mana Burn since we're playing according to the Atlantic rule set today. But I think that would have been worth it. Even if I don't have a Counterspell, it's good to pretend to have one. That always has an influence on your opponent. Tapping the Swamp. There's a Ritual. What are we going to see? There is, okay, a Bog Imp, so a 1-1 one, one flying creature. I believe it's from the dark. So he still has one black floating. Tapping two red. So two red, a black, and a colorless mana. So four, nope, changing it a little bit. So three mana now in total, four mana. What are we going to see for four? Maybe the disc, yep. There's a Neveneral's disc. The problem, of course, here for Marco is I can send it back to his hand with my uh, Time Elemental. And I've got a lot of mana on my side of the board, so I can and do that and do something else. So untapping, upkeep, no damage, draw for turn, no Vice, no Howling Mine. So just going to go up to five cards in hand. I'm going to play the Island. I can just attack here with the Fire Elemental first. I wonder if Marco's going to chump. That would make sense, I think. Yeah, I'm going to jump block here. Ooh, does he also have a bolt to kill the fire elemental? Then again, do you want to? I think if I would have a bolt, I would go for the time elemental. Although, I guess I can send the time elemental then back in response. Ah, oh, man, time, time elemental is difficult to play against. Once it sticks, it's really hard to deal with. There's an air elemental. And I'm going to use the time elemental here that effect on the Neveneral's Disc. Three cards in hand past the turn. Yeah, this is pretty good for me. And that means it's really bad for Marco. Marco on nine life. Next turn, I can attack him for nine. So it's going to be really tough for him. Needs to play at least two blockers out because one of the blockers I can send back with my Time Elemental. Or, of course, have a terror or something else. Nope, I guess I got the game. Oh, he had a really beautiful Royal Assassin there in hand. 
No, but nothing he can do against the Time Elemental. That was the big problem here. Marco uh, not winning game one. That means I've won game number one. And um, yeah, we are going to go. Uh, we're not going to go to our sideboards, by the way, because Marco has no sideboard. So we're just going to shuffle back up and we're going to go to game number two. Game number two, here we go. Marco on the play. He did take out another part of his deck, by the way. So the same method you saw at the start of the video. So this is another chunk. And here we see, oh, what's this card called again? It's a 1-1 one, one from Fallen Empires. And for one colorless, it makes it into black mana. So you can filter your mana into black mana. It's quite handy with cards like Drain Life, for example. Anyway, playing a Island myself passing to turn. There's the attack. Gonna go to 19. So again, a one drop for Marco, which is quite nice. Ooh, changing his mind though. Looks like he's not attacking. Another swamp, tapping two black. Ooh, nether shadow, now he's gonna attack, of course. Okay, first, wanted to play out the nether shadow, hit me for two. So nether shadow, one of the few uh, creatures in old school that can attack the turn, it comes into play. Pretty special ability, second blue for me. And that's it, passing the turn, so. Perhaps I have a counter spell in hand, who knows? That's the thing with counter magic. Sometimes your opponent has it, sometimes they're just pretending to have it. There's again an attack for two. Gonna put me on 16. Are we gonna see a land drop by Marco? There is a mountain. That's pretty good. Tapping three. There we see a granite gargoyle. So perhaps we're gonna see a counter spell now. If I have it, of course, nope. There's a past turn. So I guess I didn't want a counter or I just don't have a counter spell. Playing a mountain, tapping it directly. And ooh, there's a lightning bolt. Beautiful signed one by Christopher Rush. Bolting away the gargoyle. So that's nice, but I am looking at two more points of damage this turn. Gonna drop to 14 if that happens. Exactly, there's the attack again. So dropping to 14. Is that another mountain? Yep, another mountain on the battlefield. It's going to tap all four. What are we going to see? There is a guardian beast, so a 2-4 creature from Arabian Nights, and there is the counter spell. So I am deciding to counter this one. Of course, guardian beast, it's really good with a lot of artifacts, and in this deck it could be good, but remember, it's a 666 card deck, so it's really hard to get full advantage out of a guardian beast. But still, a 2-4 for 3 is, is pretty good value. There is another mountain tapping three. What are we going to see? There's a time elemental. Okay. So next turn it can start doing some work, but it's not that useful on this board. You know, you don't want to invest four mana to send back a one one or, you know, a one mana ca casting cost creature, I mean, or a two mana casting cost creature like Nether Shadow. And remember, you cannot block with the time elemental. Like, well, you can, but if you do, it destroys itself and you take, I believe, five damage. So it's really not meant to be blocked with. Probably going to take two more points, going to drop to 12. Or do I have another bolt in hand? Probably mentioning now that I cannot block with it. Going to tap a red. Okay, there's a bolt. Yeah, I guess I'm not going to kill the Nether Shadow because Nether Shadow, when, when it has three creatures on top of it, it actually returns to the battlefield. So deciding to just go for a 1-1, but obviously this is not really how you want to spend your bolts. And now I'm kind of regretting spending that bolt on that 1-1. One -one. Should have just taken the 1 damage. It's a bit of a bad play from my part, unless I have a better option here. Tapping 5, we're going to see an elemental, air elemental hitting the board. I mean, that's pretty good. Air elemental, of course, the 4-4 four -four flying vanilla. So that can stop the Granite Gargoyle and, of course, the Nether Shadow. So things are looking up for me now, kind of stabilizing at 13. Marco's still at 20, hasn't taken a single point of damage. But five mana for me is kind of the magical number, right? Because I can start playing out those big elementals. Or are we going to see an attack here with the Gargoyle? Nope, there's the Nether Shadow going... Attacking here, so perhaps he's got a bolt in hand. So if I block with the elemental, one damage is marked on it, and then if he bolts. But I'm taking the risk, though, just blocking it. 
are we going to see a bolt here? Can, of course, wait until his end step. Maybe it was just a bluff. That's also possible, of course. Either way, I'm uh, still on 13. Going to tap four, so I guess it was just a bluff. Oh, it wasn't. No, 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 no. There's the fireball. I thought it, maybe he was going to play something else. It's a fireball killing the air elemental. He is stepped out, though, but uh, air elemental is gone. Tapping five, another elemental perhaps, another air elemental. Wow. So I just keep playing out the air elementals. So another four, four here hitting the board. He's gonna tap two, a black and a red. There's an anime dead. Oh, probably going to take back the air elemental, right? I mean, the good news for me at least is that... Oh, actually, I've got the time elemental. I can use time elemental, get it back into my hand. I wonder if Marco realizes this. This is a moment for my time elemental to actually shine. Yeah, going to tap four. Of course, going to use the air elemental, returning the air elemental to my own hand. So basically what Marco now has done is... He, he's returned it back to the battlefield for me and back into my hand. So I guess I should thank him here. Probably overlooked that. Air Elemental, a card that doesn't see that much play, but it's actually really, really good. The problem is you need to invest three mana. It's four mana to use the ability. It, it has double blue in it as well in the ability. So it, it, it needs a lot of investing and it's very, very slow. But once it's, it gets going, it's, it's really tough to, to kind of deal with as an opponent. It's one of those creatures that you just want to bolt as soon as it hits the table. Yeah, this is pretty tough here for Marco. So he's got three cards in hand. There's another Swamp. He's going to tap five. Ooh, this is um, Night Stalker, right? It's a 4-4 four, four from Legends. You can pay one black and tap it to redirect the damage you take to the Night Stalker. It's kind of like a veteran bodyguard. And the damage from one source, I believe. I mean, it's so cool to see these cards. Like, you don't see these cards in action a lot. And, and I guess if you're building a 666 card deck, the nice one of the nice things of that is that you can just put all those cards in there. And then you usually, when you play with them, you find out that they're actually not as bad as you think. You know, they have their use. Here's the attack. 4-4 four, four elemental into the air. Probably just going to take the damage. Your first damage taken by Marco. Going to tap five more. Another elemental. Wow. So I'm finding tons of air elementals here in this game. My second air elemental here hitting the board. So two four four flyers now, and yeah, it's 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 looking pretty bad for Marco. Hopefully for him, he can at least find another mountain, because then he can pump his gargoyle so that he can at least block one of the air elementals. But this is a tough scenario for him. He could consider attacking with the Night Stalker. You know, if I block, I trade it for an air elemental, which is not too bad. And I'm definitely not going to block with the time elemental. Yep, going to attack with everything. Wow. This is interesting, right? He's, he's kind of representing to have another bolt, for example. So I guess what I could do here is block the gargoyle. And then, I mean, if he has a bolt, it's a two for one. I think that's my best option to kind of clear the air and take four from the Night Stalker. Go to nine. So dropping to nine here. And again, two damage marked on my air elemental. Let's see what's going to happen. Another direct damage. Fell. Oh, a falling star. Oh, this is really good. He can kill my time elemental and my air elemental. Oh, this is so nice. And we're going to see a falling star flip. That is pretty sweet. I'm really enjoying your deck, Marco. And just like what I said before, it's just so much fun. Like every game, you take another chunk out of your deck and you play with different cards. And it, it's so much fun.
And I mean, I'm surprised how well your deck is functioning. You know, we saw that in game one that it works pretty good. And we see that now in game number two. So he's going to flip. Oh, it's a hit on both. Because I want to say, I don't know which card represents which, but it's a hit on both. So wow, a two for one here with the Falling Star. Of course, he did lose the Gargoyle, so I guess it's two for two, but this is really good and dealing four damage as well. Don't forget about that. So now I'm on nine, and it was looking so good for me, but now I'm really worried. Two Air Elementals already in the graveyard. Do I have more, though? Control Magic would be pretty painful for Marco here. First attacking for four, going to put him on 12, so I guess I have a follow-up play to make. Wow, there's a Fireball probably on the uh, Simeon Night Stalker. Is it Simeon Night Stalker or just Night Stalker? Anyway, killing the creature to 4-4 is now gone. Marco on 12, I'm on 9. So a second card drawn here for Marco needs to find an answer to that Air Elemental. Tapping 3, Sorcerer's Queen... That's pretty good. That can turn, of course, my air elemental next turn into an O2. So that is useful. There's an island. Attacking here with the 4-4. He's going to drop to 8. Okay, so the Sorcerer's Queen is still around. So perhaps he can now stabilize. Marco on 8, I'm on 9. Oh, an attack for 1. Really? Okay, okay, he's going to make it an O2. Okay, I thought he was attacking. Going to tap. What is he going to do? Oh, Drain Life. Oh, this is so good. He's going to play a Drain Life. Oh, I love this. It also means he gains two life. Do I have something against this? Tapping two red. Oh, there's a fork. So I can copy the Drain Life. That is sweet. And now I can drain the Sorcerer's Queen. I love this, man. Copying the drain life so I'm killing the queen but he's also killing my air elemental so I go up to 10 and he also goes up to 10 I, man this game is fun 10 10 game number two and I mean both decks doing a lot of cool stuff one card in hand for Marco two cards in hand for me and it's my turn so I guess I have a slight advantage here or slight actually a pretty big card advantage I wonder what those two cards in hand are Going to draw into card number three. Can I find another big air elemental? Or, well, actually not an air elemental, but just another elemental. Finding a mana vault. Passing to turn. What would be quite nice right now for the game as well is like a Wheel of Fortune. Five mana there for Marco. Looking at his hand. Tapping four. What are we going to see for four? Oh, there's a Suchi. That is pretty good. Suchi, four, four creature hitting the board. I'm on 10. I do play with a single Shatter Storm. Passing the turn. Oh, not finding anything. Two cards in hand for Marco now. Swings in. Put me on six. Probably. Exactly. Wow. Look at him go. Tapping. Oh, there's a Merc Dweller. There's a two-two. If it attacks and is not blocked, it gets plus 2, plus 0 oh bonus. It becomes a 4-2. So he has lethal on the board right now. I need to play at least one blocker or get rid of a creature. Control magic would still be really, really good for me. Tapping 5. Are we going to see a big elemental? Another air elemental. Wow, that's air elemental number 4. That doesn't happen often that I find all 4. And I mean, if Marco not just attacks with, with two, exactly. Probably going to block here to Merc Dwellers, go to two life. Okay, tapping. Oh, there's a Hercules Recall. Yeah, this is really good. So Hercules Recall on the Suchi. So Hercules Recall says target player needs to return all the artifacts to their hand. And blocking the Merc Dwellers. Yeah, this is pretty tough here for Marco. This could be actually decisive or not. What's he doing? What are we going to see? Oh, he had a Howl from beyond. That was so good of one with the Howl if I wouldn't have had the uh, Hercules Recall. This is really sweet. 
Wow, wow, wow. So I'm losing again my air elemental. And I have to give a big compliment to Marco. Like the way he's killing my air elementals off is, is beautiful. You know, all four are now, are now dead. And it took hard work. Tapping four. What do we have for four? Oh, there's a wheel. Ho, ho, ho. Discarding the bad moon. One mana floating. We're playing X points, remember. So it is with mana burn. I hope we did remember. I forget that sometimes because I'm used to playing uh, old school Swedish. But uh, it's relevant, you know. Marco drawing a fresh seven. I'm drawing a fresh seven. Taking a mana away. Playing a mana vault. Tap two more and the vault. Probably going to see an elemental here. There's a water elemental. And there's another water elemental. Wow, that is 10 damage on the board. Look at Marco's life total. That is 10. I mean, it's highly unlikely that he's not going to be able to do anything about this, having a full hand, but still. I mean, I'm able to do a lot of stuff thanks to the uh, mana vaults. The mana vaults, of course, are going to hurt me next turn if I don't untap them. So that's a little risky. But I have to say, I'm really enjoying this game too. And it's now up to Marco to come up with something. There's another swamp, so he's got six mana. So the water elementals are five force. Tapping five. Fire elemental, wow, beautiful. How flavorful is this? So we've got Water Elemental versus Fire Elemental. I love it. And of course, I'm probably going to swing in with both. But let's first see if Marco can do something else with the remaining Swamp. Oh, he's got a weakness. That is, again, really good. So minus two, minus one, one of the two air, uh, Water Elementals. So that Water Elemental is now, it was a 5-4, so it becomes a 3-2. Yeah, weakness is really good here. And I'm going to untap both of my vaults. Look at me go. Don't want to take the damage from it. I'm on six. Going to play a volcanic island. I mean, if I have a burn spell, I can hit him for six, put him on four. Hmm, I wonder. It's pretty big if, though. My, my deck doesn't have that much burn in it. I play one earthquake. One Fireball, one Disintegrate, and of course, also four Lightning Bolts. Already played out one Bolt, I believe. Attacking here with both, so this is interesting, right? Is he going to kill the smaller Water Elemental and take five, go to five? Or is he going to trade for the big one? It also depends if he thinks I've got a Burn Spell, or maybe I'm just uh, bluffing. Oh, no, I'm not bluffing. There is the Disintegrate deciding game number two here. But don't go anywhere because we did play game number three. Why? Because it's fun. That's why. And I have to say, Marco, I'm really impressed with your deck. What a fun game this was. So game number two, again, goes to the Elementals. But like I said, stick around because we are going to play a game number three. Game number three. Here we go. So... I am ahead, but the question is, can Marco get a game win out of this third game? And then he's on the play, of course. Oh, look at that, taking a mulligan, going down to six. Luckily for me, I'm on the draw. It always feels when I take a mulligan, if I'm on the draw, it's not that bad. You know, far from ideal, of course, but at least you have the same amount of cards, I guess, as your opponent after that draw. Anyway, there's a Swamp into a Vampire Bats. It's a card from Legends, an 0-1 flyer, and you can give it plus 1, plus 0 for one swamp. You cannot put more than two swamps in there. Would have been kind of nice if they would have just made that limitless, or maybe like a Dragon Whelp effect, where you could put three in or four in, and when you put more in, uh, into it than that, that it would destroy itself. I'm playing a Mana Vault here, by the way. So Mana Vault turn one. That is risky in my deck, so it could go for turn two Elemental, for example. If I have it, of course. Anyway, first there's the attack. Are we going to see the pump here by Marco? Yep, pumping it up to 2-1. So putting me on 18. I always like Vampire Bats in combination with uh, Bad Moon. Turn 1, Vampire Bats. Turn 2, Bad Moon. In that same deck, you can play like Unholy Strength and Willow the Wisps. 
Can be very low to the ground deck. Anyway, playing out a volcanic island here. So now I've got two blue and three. If I have an air elemental or a water elemental, I guess I don't. Or perhaps I want to keep counter magic up passing the turn here. Let's see what Marco can do. Can of course just swing for two again, put me on 16. First gonna have a land drop. There we see the mountain. Five cards in hand, I believe, after the draw. After he played out the land, I mean. Ooh, he's in the tank here, thinking about his options. Does he want to pump the mana in the bats, or does he have a better option? Tapping both of his blacks, so I guess he's got a better option. There's a Blight. Probably going to play that on the uh, Volcanic Island. Or not, of course. There's the counter spell. Countering the Blight. Yeah, and this is kind of the annoying thing then about the bats, right? Because you got to use two black to, to cast a Blight. You don't have any mana left to pump the bats, and you can't even do a single point of damage. That's a bit annoying, of course, for Marco here. Would have been nice if it would just be one black and one. That would also kind of make it a good card compared to uh, Sinkhole. You know, you, you would give it a little bit of an advantage because it's, it's worse than Sinkhole, of course. Anyway, playing a City of Brass here. Four cards in hand for me, four cards in hand for Marco as well. Let's see if I can play a big elemental. Ooh, here we go. Tapping for red, I guess. Gonna go to 17, of course, for my own city. There's an Earth Elemental. Four, five. Wow. And this is, this is, if, if Marco doesn't have an answer to this, it's gonna be really tough for him. I mean, a really nice answer would be a Paralyze. Just Paralyze it down, you know, and then I still take damage from the Mana Vault. There's a Swamp, but let's first see if he has an answer. Tapping two. Are we gonna see a Terror? Ooh, there's a Wall of Dust. I believe it's got enough toughness. Is that a 1-6, the Wall of Dust, or a 0-6? Again, I don't see these cards often enough. It is another wall by Richard Thomas. I know there's a mage in there. There's always the question, is the mage stuck, or is the mage the one casting the wall? What do you think? Anyway, there's the attack with the bats. So again, taking damage, and now taking damage from the vault. So I'm already on 14, and yeah, my 4-5 my Earth Elemental is just not looking great. With that wall there on the side of Marco. Second City of Brass. Oof, I'm going to hurt myself a lot this game, I think. Which is not great. I'm already on 14. If I want to untap the Vault next turn, it's going to take two damage from City of Brass. This would drop to 12. Oh, nothing to play out. This is bad news for me. Like, it felt like I was had a great start with that counter spell and then with the Earth Elemental to turn after. But, yeah, that wall is really uh, setting me back here. Let's see what Marco is going to do. So he's got a red and three black. He can just attack just with the Vampire of Spoopy on 12 past the turn. Looks like he's going to do something else though. Tapping four. Ooh, there's a Rock of Courage, a 3-3 three, three Flyer. That's a problem. Hopefully I've got a Bolt here. I guess I don't. Look at that, going to untap my Volt. Take two damage. This feels so bad, you know. An island. Oh, that means I'm going to take more damage next turn. He can attack me for five, put me on seven. Oh, that wall is so good for Marco here. This, uh, this wall of dust, right? I believe the name is. Card from Legends. I mean, it's doing a lot of work in this, uh, in this scenario. I mean, it's looking really good for Marco. He can just swing in for five, put me on seven. Or does he have better options? Just attacking with the Rock of Courage is no going with the bats as well. Yeah, I'm gonna swing in for the full five. Put me on seven. Oh man. And look at the life total of Marco, by the way, still on 20, not taking a single point of damage thus far. There's the mountain. Passing the turn. Now this this is the moment for me where it has to happen. Maybe if I can find a fireball, I can kill both flyers. I mean, I've got a lot of mana. Tapping two blue. Tapping three. Are we going to see an air elemental? Okay, air elemental. That is pretty good. That is not too bad, you know. 
Erlewin can stop the Rock of Gritches and the Bats. If he attacks with both, I can kill the, the Rock and take two, go to five, which is fine. Then untap the Vault again, I guess. I mean, I don't feel that I'm, that I'm out yet, but at least this is uh, an answer to those flying creatures of Marco. Three cards in hand, by the way. Marco now has it having four cards in hand. Let's see what he can do here. Again, a pretty exciting match. Okay, there's the Bok Imp, another 1-1 one, one flyer. And I mean, it's not good, but it's another flyer. So if he just can find enough flyers and remember the Howl from Beyond from last game, if he can find cards like that, you know, he can kind of win with just one creature going through. For example, a Bloodlust. Here we see a Bolt. Okay, this is pretty important. Bolt probably on the Rock of Kariches. I assume I'm doing this on end step. I mean, this is, this is really, really good for me. So let's see if Marco wants to respond to this. So Marco's thinking about it. Nope, he's just going to accept it. Three cards in hand for Marco, two for me now, but I'm going to go to the draw. First, I have to decide if I want to untap the Vault. You know, the, the hard part here is I kind of want to untap the Vault and I don't want to untap the Vault because by untapping it, I take a damage anyway. Exactly, going to take a damage here because I need to use mana from the City of Brass. Okay, here is a mountain. Tapping two. Tapping four. Do I have a control magic? Ooh, tapping five. So this has to be another elemental. Fire elemental. But this is risky though, right? Because I'm on five. And still not that flyer. Passing the turn. And I guess next turn I can swing in with my earth elemental and my fire elemental. So also for Marco, this is a really interesting turn, right? I only have one card in hand. He's got more cards in hand. I mean, if he could, for example, play a Terror on the Air Elemental, like that would be ideal. Drain Life will be kind of good as well. Tapping six, by the way. What are we going to see for six? Oh, look at that. Oh, that's the 5-5 five five that destroys, uh, that can destroy lands. Oh, this is horrible for me. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that is so good. That is so good. Oh, man. This, it, this is going to be glorious for Marco here. I'm in real, real trouble. I have to get rid of this creature. Demonic Hordes hitting the board, 5-5, five, five. amazing. It's got an upkeep cost of 3 black, and if you cannot pay the upkeep cost, it taps itself and it destroys your opponent, gets to choose a land that you can destroy. And uh, so you lose a land in, of, of your opponent's choice, that, that's what I'm trying to say. Now the Demonic Hordes has become a little bit better under the current rules, because if you cannot pay the upkeep cost, which Marco can, so it's not relevant, but then you can still, in response to... Demonic Horde tapping itself, you can still tap it and destroy a land on the side of your opponent. Your opponent then can still choose one land of yours to destroy, but still, it makes it a little, well, actually a lot better. But yeah, Marco can pay the, uh, the cost, and I'm, I'm in serious trouble here, because he's going to start destroying my other lands, only going to give me probably my City of Brasses. And I mean, it's a slow plan, but it's going to work. Yeah, and this is just really... A big problem. I wonder if Marco wants to destroy a land in main phase or probably just wants to do it on my end step. Yeah, this is this is what he wants, right? Passing the turn and probably gonna on end step gonna try to destroy one of my lands. And yeah, this is really good. Okay, tapping here on my deck. I need something. Yeah, and even a control magic is not ideal here because of course I cannot pay the upkeep cost. For the Demonic Hordes, there he's using it. And I'm doing nothing, just passing the turn. That is really bad for me. So losing the Volcanic, I mean, I'm not in trouble yet. I can probably just take a few more turns with this scenario. But after two turns, it's going to be a pretty bad for me. So I need to find something. Okay, a land. A land kind of feels like a time walk now. It's going to give me some more time. 
Again, he's going to destroy something. Going to go for more lands. Going to go for the red mana first, it seems. I mean, I still have my Disintegrate Fireball Earthquake in the deck. Earthquake, of course, a card that I really don't want to use being on 5 myself. But if it can find a Disintegrate for the Demonic Hordes, that would be ideal. But what an iconic card, and, and, and how cool is it to play against the Demonic Hordes? It doesn't happen that often. And again, he's going to destroy something. So again, a mountain is gone. Keeps paying for the upkeep. There's a swamp. So he's got four mana now. But I mean, he's no reason. he has no reason to do anything. He's doing fine. He's, he's, he's just destroying my lance. I, I wonder if I should attack now with the air elemental, actually. Okay, there's a soul ring. Tapping another blue. Okay, what are we going to see? Another mana vault. Okay, so I mean, I, I've got a lot of mana. The problem is at a certain point, I'm going to run out of colored mana. Oh, and again, destroying a land. This is so painful. Going to go for a city of press. Okay, so he's really targeting my ability to make red mana. Kind of makes sense because a big fireball is something that can kind of get me out of trouble here. And I think what I should do if I draw into another red source, a, a, a red mana, I mean, I should keep it in hand to wait until I also draw a fireball or disintegrate. There's the attack. Interesting here because he knows I've got that air elemental. So I'm probably going to block the, the vampire bats. Although, I mean, he needs the mana for the demonic hordes. I need to block one of them anyway. Probably it's best to just block the bats, I guess. So I've chosen my blocks. We'll just have to wait and see what's going to happen. So choosing here to block the Bog Imp. I guess my reasoning here is that he then needs to pump in that last black mana. And there's a bolt. Okay, so I'm also losing my air elements. So things would just keep getting worse and worse <laughs> for me. Oh man, this is this is really good for Marco. I mean, I need an answer now. He can attack me for two next turn, put me on two, and he's going to destroy another land on my end step. Oh man, this is a big problem. And I don't have any good attacks, because if I attack with Fire Elemental, Earth Elemental, he can block one with the wall, and then the 4-5 Earth Elemental with the Demonic Hordes. The Hordes is a 5-5. Five, five. Okay, tapping. F oh, look at this. Take it up. He's going to go to 3. Did I find direct damage here? And I'm probably, maybe if it's a Fireball, I'm trying to find a way to kill the Hordes and kill the, the, the Vampire Bats. This is a Fireball. Wow, am I actually going to find a way out here in game number 3? Is this happening? Oh, a fork! Oh! Oh, I love it. Yeah, you can see me applaud here. This is awesome, Marco. Wow. I mean, you were already winning in such a glorious way. You know, Vampire Bats, Bog Imp, Demonic Hordes. That's, that, those are boss cards. And then playing this fork on my Fireball. I mean, I tip my head off to you, sir. I mean, this is fantastic magic. Thank you, Marco, for bringing your amazing deck here to the table. And also thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And before you go, I'd like to ask you to uh, like, comment and share. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. Talking about moving forward, you can also consider becoming a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for more information about that. One of the nice perks about becoming a patron, by the way, Marco is also a patron is that you can uh, play a game against me at a certain tier level and also you can get your name in the end scroll at the end of every video. What end scroll? This end scroll.
Sumba Kazik. 